Okay, so I am excited to be on and talk to you guys a moment about discerning, locating and discerning um, demonic and heavenly portals. What are, what are these portals for? <laughs> um, how do you discern them? What do you do when you see them? Good morning, James. You on the road. <laughs> so, I, I just really wanted to talk for a moment about these demonic and heavenly portals. How many of you guys have heard some teaching on on portals? I know that the um, Kingdom Living Ecclesia's prayer room in particular has a heavenly portal. I love being in there. You feel it when you walk in. You know, angels are there. You just easily access the presence of God in certain places. And, you know, there's whole cities where heavenly portals are open. I think um, Charlotte, North Carolina is one of them. Actually, before I jump in, too much i want to like pray for just a moment while some people are hopping on you guys share this tag some people uh, <clears throat> and just pray with me that the people that need to hear this will hear this so lord god we just come to you in the mighty name of jesus lord we thank you that you um give us access to the throne room that that you use us as heavenly portals in the earth lord i thank you that you have given us discernment about demons that you have given us discernment about activities in the spiritual realm and i pray that everybody under the sound of my voice would get an impartation of greater discernment into the spirit realm and to demonic influences demonic portals what to do with it um, and how to battle those things and not to be sucked into that stuff in the mighty name of jesus Okay, I've heard teachings, quite a few teachings on demonic portals and heavenly portals, but one thing that the Lord showed me that I haven't heard before, I'm not saying that hasn't been taught, but you know, people can be portals. <laughs> and as believers, we are heavenly portals because the Holy Spirit lives within us. So God is touching earth through us, his spirit in us creates a heavenly portal where we are accessing heaven by his spirit because we're seated with Christ in heavenly places and we're fixing our eyes on the unseen realm. And so we ourselves, especially those who are led by the spirit, are open portals. I mean, if you're all in the flesh, <laughs> you know, that's going to close some doors down and, and you from the spirit flowing. But, um, I, I want to, to get across to you all that people can be portals for demons. People can be portals for the Holy Spirit, clearly. Um, I, have you ever been around somebody who their the atmosphere changes when you're around them? <laughs> you feel the presence of God more strongly when you're around them? Or have you ever been around somebody and you just feel the atmosphere change and you feel oppressive or you feel stifled a lot of times if somebody has got demons that they have been entertaining that they have been partnered with and the decisions that they're making they have um, and and I believe even Christians can partner with demons in the decisions that they're making you know addictions and things like that can get demons controlling even a believer to a certain extent I don't think you can be um, completely possessed as a believer, but you can be oppressed by demons. And and it's important to recognize, first and foremost, when you're being oppressed by a demon spirit, because all, it's different than just your emotional depression or a down day. You know, how many of you all, when you are walking through life with the Lord, come into days, come into places where you feel like you are oppressed by demonic forces, by dark forces. You know, sometimes it's because you have opened yourself up to demons by hanging out with certain people in a wrong way. You know, it's not that you don't have unbelievers that you're hanging out with ever. Jesus was a friend of sinners. You, you can't lead anybody to the Lord if you don't have non-believing friends. But... If you are opening yourself up to non-believers that are in some kind of a demonic um, stronghold, that can affect you. <clears throat> I know for me, I, I'm a dreamer, so I can have 
I can be around certain people or talk to certain people and just have dreams that night and recognize after I have opened myself up to them in counsel or after I have opened my heart up to them to share the love of Jesus. When you are an intercessor, when you're counseling somebody, when you're laying, if you're in the church prayer team, you're laying hands on people. You got to be careful when you walk away from that situation to do spiritual cleansing of yourself and plead the blood of Jesus over yourself. Say nothing that is on them is going to get attached to me. You know, I'm, I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. I mean, you can even Google breaking away prayers um, after you've ministered to somebody because you don't want to just be a person who's walking around afraid to interact with people that are struggling and hurting and demonized <clears throat> or even just oppressed by demons. But it's important because you could get caught up in somebody's demons if you don't recognize that they are being used as demonic portals in your life. And so if you don't recognize it and you're just full force open to that person without any spiritual comprehension that that stuff is transferable and that those things can get on you and those things can influence you, if you're not aware of what's going on and covering yourself in the spirit, covering yourself in the blood and guarding your heart in that situation, you can get stuck. <clears throat> okay, so the, there's the people with demonic portals. But there's actually places. There are regions. I know, I always tell my husband, I've always said when you go to the mall, you get mauled by the mall demons. There are really, there are some worldly spirits of greed and uh, avarice and things like that at the mall. I know a lot of people have said at hospitals they feel demonic portals. I always feel heavenly portals at hospitals. I, I see angels all around hospitals. Hospitals are full of sick people who might have been attacked by demons, but they are covered in prayer. Because when somebody's in the hospital, they got Christians praying for them. So for me, I, I typically discern it, and it's not necessarily everywhere at the mall. Like, I cover myself before I go in the mall that I'm not going to get sucked, <laughs> sucked in or oppressed that I can enjoy my shopping without having, uh, you know. And even at the mall nowadays, they have pictures of, you know, they have pornography on the outside of the shops, you know, where they have, like, practically naked women. Nowadays, they have, like, 12-year-old practically naked girls in, hanging up at the mall. And, you know, you, I feel that stuff. Um, clearly, your phone has, it, depending on what you're searching, you have to be careful because this is a huge, huge portal for demons, your phone, what you're clicking on, what you're looking at. More than anything, because I really guard where I'm going and what I'm doing and I'm aware of who I'm hanging out with and how much I open myself up to them. But for me, the the one thing that I have to be really careful of is what I read and what I click on on my phone <clears throat> because I will definitely have dreams about it and recognize, okay, that's where that came in through this thing on the phone that I read. So you got to be led by the Spirit on what you're watching, even even if it's not, um, you know, there's just, the the Bible says be careful how you live because the days are evil. So you have to be aware how you're living, discerning how you're spending your time and what you're opening yourself up to. Because when you put, when you open yourself up to certain information, you know, people who watch the news all the time, look, the, the news stations are demonic portals. They're false prophets. They are speaking into people's lives um, twisted truths, absolute lies, and they have a demonic agenda behind them. So when you're watching certain news stations, when you are listening to news anchors or reading certain articles, even if they're sharing something that's happening in the world, if they are twisting it, they have demonic twisting spirits trying to twist things to get you to view things a certain way. They're the demons operate by trying to get a hold of your mind and your thought processes. So you got to be careful about the news. I know you guys know this. <clears throat> but then there's also regions and there's houses and there's rooms and there's neighborhoods. And there are demonic strongholds over certain areas. And you don't always know 
how they got there. I'm sure if you studied into the history or you, you know, asked the Lord to reveal to you, um, like when we're walking in neighborhoods, we like pray over certain neighborhoods. We're praying over Herndon. We've staked out Herndon because there, there are principalities over different regions. And I don't recognize going head to head with principalities from what I am reading in the scriptures. You pray to the Lord and the Lord will send, um, archangels to do warfare with principalities over regions. Um, you know, sometimes when I'm praying, I pray against all kind of demonic powers, powers, principalities, but like, I'm not going, I personally, and I've heard it teach taught both ways, but I personally don't go head to head with principalities a whole lot. <laughs> like, I mean, I pray that the Lord would, you know, send angels to assist and I pray over regions. So in a way I'm praying against principalities, but, um, you know, I've heard it, I've heard it happen both, you know, both ways, you know, I've heard people preach it both ways, but I don't think that you're going to be hindered from being effective in regions by asking the Lord to send mighty warring angels to, to break down strongholds and principalities over regions. And if you're, if you're praying against high level demonic activity to closing high level demonic portals, you need to be praying in agreement and conjunction with other believers that are strong, that understand their authority, because in no way does any demon have any power over us, and no way does any spirit able to do anything to us. You know, we are covered in the blood of Jesus, but depending on how strong your gates are, because yes, all that is true, but if you have broken down gates, broken up windows, doors hanging on hinges where you're not understanding the spiritual realm and you're opening yourself up to all kinds of stuff by, you know, um, foolishness, <laughs> then you are actually able to be um, taken down by demons in certain ways. <clears throat> they can only go so far, but when you have your own gates and your own doors are broken down, then you're trying to go out there and do high-level warfare you are opening yourself up for more spiritual warfare that you might not be prepared to understand what's going on in battle. I mean, l just look at how battles work. There are trained soldiers. They go through boot camp. They go through intensive training before they get out on the battlefield. And I'm not saying you have to wait to be perfect to pray for regions, to pray for your neighborhood or anything like that. But I think that there's a certain reverence to God and a... Um, a, a fear of God and an understanding that the spirit realm isn't a joke. <laughs> I mean, it's not a joke. There's millions and millions of babies being killed in this country. These are innocent little babies. And this is demonic. And it is demonic through people and power. And then even tons of people who aren't in power believing lies and, and having evil, wicked intent and being influenced by demons. And so if we think that demons don't have any power to influence in a really, really tragic, um, gruesome, dangerous way, then we're not giving um, enough credence to what the word is saying about these things. The enemy is under our feet. Jesus died on the cross. He made a spectacle of the enemy. He put him under his feet and we are in Christ and he and, and the enemy is under our feet and we need to believe that we need to know that we need to walk in it but we also need to understand what we're dealing with when it comes to demons and we don't all I, I really believe we need to pray for greater discernment because if something is off even if you cannot completely pinpoint it or completely understand what it is you ask God to give you more discernment because there might be a situation in a relationship that, um, you know, that's gone on or a situation that's gone on and you discern there is something off. There is warning bells going off. A lot of people don't pay attention to these warning bells when they're dating. They marry certain people that they have no business marrying or they connect and partner with certain people that they have no business partnering with because they're not using spiritual discernment to understand what's going on in that relationship. They're looking at the more, the surface level of it. 
And listen, as ministers of the gospel, as, as the people of Jesus Christ, we're not just supposed to, a lot of times people who aren't secure in their own righteousness, who aren't walking with secured gates, they are really afraid to be friends with unbelievers or they're really afraid like to, to walk into certain places or to do certain things that the Lord's leading them to do because of the evil in that region or the, the fear that comes on them because of the understanding that there are <laughs> the possibility of getting sucked into a bad place. So, you know, if you're new at spiritual warfare, if you're a new believer, if you're a baby believer, if you're still get in your gates and doors in order, then it's good to partner with more mature believers and learn how to pray and learn spiritual warfare and learn how to discern. The Bible says those who with constant use, when you use your discernment constantly and how some, some of the ways that you sharpen your discernment is when you get discernment, when you get a measure of discernment and you are led by the spirit in that, the next time you're going to have stronger discernment. If, let's say, you have a Holy Spirit alarm not to go to this party or not to go to this, out with this person or not to invest in this investment or, you know, not to sow in this or to whatever it is, even take from somebody who's giving you something. Sometimes there are things that are given manipulatively and maybe somebody's trying to help you in some way or give something to you or be there for you in some way and you sense that there is a manipulation behind it and you have a Holy Spirit alarm not to accept that or take it or get involved in that thing, whatever it is, and you go ahead and do it anyway, your discernment is going to lessen. Then the next time it's not going to be as loud and then the next time it's not going to be as, it's going to be even lower. Same goes with if you want to hone your uh, discernment. You have to walk by faith in it, even if you're not fully comprehending why you're discerning a certain thing about a certain person. If you're like, eh, something's not setting right, I'm not going out with this person, or something's not setting right, whatever the situation is, and you follow that discernment, God might give you revelation. Sometimes you are waiting God to explain to you, well, why can't I go there? Why don't I do this? You know? You don't always got to know why. You need to follow the lead and then the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And then sometimes after you're, afterwards, you'll find out why he's told you not to do a certain thing. Maybe you won't, but you will grow in your discernment in these situations. <clears throat> and when it comes to, okay, I'm going to try to focus more on the demonic portal thing. There are, you know, God's given us certain territories. And so in your neighborhood, Walk around and pray and ask God to show you to discern what the um, what the curse is over the place. If there's a curse over the place, you know, there, there might be poverty curses. There might be um, curses of sickness, curses of divorce. Um, and I mean, then, you know, you talk, there's ancient, there's scriptures about building up the ancient ruins and you know, there can be ancestors in a region. There can be, they talk about houses being haunted, like if somebody was murdered in a house or something like that, thinking it was like, oh, the spirit of this murdered person. Well, you know, if somebody's been murdered in a house, it's very likely that there is a demonic portal there. When, when you go into a hotel room, there's probably demonic portals there. You know, you pray over that place. If there's been wickedness that's happened in a place over and over, over fornication in a place that's happened over and over and over, go into that hotel room and pray, anoint the windows, command any spirit that's in there to get out. Because when you step foot in that hotel room and you've paid for it, that's your territory, that's your property. They don't have any right to be there and you cover that place up. Same with people. You might have some people in your life who are like a demonic portal, but they're your family members. And as your family members, you have a special authority to pray over them and to stand in the gap. Okay, how do you close a demonic portal over somebody else's life? You pray over them and you stand in the gap, just like Jesus is advocating for us before the Father. Don't hold their sins against them. I am taking the penalty. I have taken the 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 penalty of their sin and I have imparted my righteousness. I've given this free gift to them and don't, you know, put a, put that on my account. Jesus is standing there before the father, the enemy's accusing us and Jesus is saying debt is paid. And so 
we are his ambassadors in the earth. And when we have family members or friends that are messing up and open doors for demonic stuff to come on them, you can pray in the Holy Spirit and you can pray in the courts of heaven. Lord, don't set, set this against them. And you can ask the Lord Jesus to, to stand in the gap and, and to, uh, to cover them. And so you're in the courts of heaven asking the Lord, just as Jesus intercedes for us, to, to cover them and to set them free and to not hold their sins against them. And it's a grace thing. It's not about what they deserve because they might be making really bad choices that causes them to deserve this demonic torment or whatever. But we don't get what we deserve. And so we want to we want to pray over regions. We want to pray over people. Lord, I know that there's been atrocities that have happened here. I know that in America, we have shed so much innocent blood, but I am asking you to show us mercy and to close. I mean, I feel like there's been some poor demonic portals opened <laughs> over this country and, 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 and children being molested and, and all this gender confusion and stuff that has come in through broken down gates and broken down doors. And, and so we pray over regions. We pray um, over people. And if you don't already have a specific country, specific city that the Lord has you interceding for or praying for, ask the Lord, what, what are some of my territories? Because he gives territories. I talked about this on one of the lives recently. Um, you know, where Joshua, they were cast in lots to hand out territories in the promised land, to the different tribes. And God gives his children territories. He gives children, his children areas where he wants them to influence. So what are your regional territories? It might, it's where you live for starters, but he might have some other territories that he wants you to stand in the gap for, that he wants you to pray over, that he wants you to close demonic portals over. And I mean, part of that is praying for the people there to find the Lord and to stop doing the things that their ancestors have done and their ancestors have done that have kept those spirits having authority in their homes and in their regions. And you, you know, you've heard about breaking curses over your own family, breaking, you know, long established cur cur curses of divorce or alcoholism or abuse. Well, that's good, and I want us to keep doing that for our families, but we need to do more than just pray for our families and our little neighborhoods. And the Lord expands as you are faithful in that. And you might be in a season where really one of your main intercessory functions is to establish the kingdom reign in your family because you you have to, in spiritual warfare and in intercessory prayer, Anybody who's been trained in it knows that if you haven't tended to your own garden, you haven't conquered, you know, the, the enemies in your own space and territory, you're not going to be as effective trying to go out and conquer new territories. <clears throat> and so you got to clear out your, your own territory. You start in the inside with yourself and clear out all, like shut all the gates, clear out all that you know, demonic influence and renewing your mind and then work that circle out and ask the Lord to expand your territory. And as we're faithful over little, we're faithful over much. And this kind of builds on what I was saying yesterday about Joseph being faithful in certain areas and God gives him more and more territory, more and more influence. But over America, each and every believer needs to understand and over the entire world what country am i praying for what cities what regions what portals need to be shut because certain people maybe from what you've been through you've you might have been through a divorce and there is you know in your church you are praying that the lord would break that curse off of the body of christ in your region and break that curse off of the people of God. And that might be your particular, one of the, the portals of that you're wanting to close off. <clears throat> you know, if you've been molested, you might want to be clo closing down the pornography portals. You need to be praying that the, the legislation is changed, that 
more and more. I pray all the time, and I found out recently that there are more people being busted for child pornography. It's a huge issue. It's a huge problem. Pornography is a progressive addiction where you aren't going to continue to be satisfied with certain images, with certain people or situations. And so a lot of people might not have ever even had child molestation in their past or anything like that. They just got sucked in to these demonic pornography portals that go, that run really deep and they get really wicked and really evil. And then they find themselves looking at and addicted to child pornography and it's huge. It's huge problem, huge problem. And, and so we pray for the hearts of people and we pray that that stuff gets shut down. And I pray for the hearts of parents to recognize and understand when the spiritual atmosphere in their home is clearly revealing to them that their teenagers are opening demonic portals through what they're looking at on their phone and not to ignore that stuff and not to not deal with that stuff because that's your house and you got to close that stuff down if it means buying them a flip phone, buy them a flip phone, do what you got to do. You cannot allow in your own home the demonic portals to stay wide open and think that you aren't going to be affected because you will. <laughs> And your teenagers certainly will. And a lot of, it's few and far between teenagers who have the spiritual by themselves without you involved wherewithal not to open those portals. <clears throat> and so there needs to be boundaries and there needs to be wisdom and there needs to be discernment about what's going on in your own home. So what do you do if you come into a place, come into a um, a situation, a person comes into your church, into the room, uh, into your life, <laughs> or you're going into a situation where you recognize the atmosphere has changed. There's a portal here. What do I do? I mean, I, I, I truly believe that you can, to a certain degree, at least if God has sent you there, while you are there, you can zip that thing up from influencing you. You can zip that thing up from influencing you. And if you know you're going to be in a region or a place where there's demonic portals, you need to pray ahead of time. We prayed and had people praying for us. This is why when missionaries get sent out before we ever went to Africa, we know that there was a lot of demonic stuff in some regions and we didn't get hit with anything. We weren't attacked in any way. We weren't affected. Our atmosphere never changed. We carried heaven everywhere we went. And... And that we just were not affected by any kind of the demonic portals in that region, which is important that you send angels on ahead of you because it's different spirits and, and God more than likely needs to send different angels other than just your own guardian angels alert the angels in that region that he is sending one of his ambassadors there that you're coming to cover you. I pray the Lord oftentimes blinds enemy eyes to me even being there blinds the enemy to what we're even doing somewhere and so that we don't have a big target on our back. God has so many scriptures about being hidden and covered and hidden in Christ. I mean, what does that mean? That means the enemy can't even necessarily see what you're doing to form battle plans against you. And so we need to pray, God, hide us as he sends us, that he covers us as he sends us. And so the enemy doesn't even necessarily know what's going on with us. You know, he might see some kind of angelic activity around there, but there's a covering. I know we were doing a prayer room at the Kingdom Living Ecclesia once, and God caused me to see in the spirit, and oh, and there were angels surrounding the whole building. They were gathering around the building in excitement of what was going to happen. They had instruments and weapons, and, and so we were like covered in that place. And since I've been praying, there's been a couple of times I've seen um, angels in the sky, not not even spiritually, but like seeing these um, angelic orbs in the sky over the ecclesia and the place here. Because we've staked out this territory. And we staked out the territory. One of the things that came into my site yesterday, um, I was looking for locations just 
by faith that we're going to be able to move to whenever God opens that door, whenever we grow to the capacity where we need a bigger place. And so I was looking and seeing if there was any like churches for sale, churches for rent around the area, a bigger place. And there was only a few, but one of them was this huge $7 million, five acre campus. And I'm, I was just curious. So I looked at, it, I'm like, what? church selling a seven million dollar campus and there's a house on there big house huge and i'm looking and it is an it's an islamic temple temple that was taken apparently taken down through covid they closed down they couldn't make their rent i'm assuming they couldn't make their mortgage payment i'm assuming but i have specifically Jesus came to me in a dream and specifically said to me, do not forget the Muslims. And that has been a, a, a very specific prayer for me in this region to pray for our Muslim brothers and sisters because they're, a lot of them are worshiping God and have a heart to worship God. And they just don't understand who God really is. And I think the Lord knows they have a heart for um, God, many of them, not all of them. But here's this huge temple that's been shut down. So those people have been dispersed. Where are they? You know, and I just felt like it was kind of confirmation. I mean, that was a huge, in order for that to have shut down, something had to really crumble. And yeah, probably was COVID, but, you know, something happened where they didn't continue to, to give their offerings. <laughs> And it's closed down now, this huge temple. I might go over there and like pray and ask the Lord to redeem that property for whatever his purpose is. But that is just one of those areas that I guarantee you there's, there's some kind of a demonic portal there. Okay, Lord God, I just pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you help us to be more discerning about people and portals and demonic activity and open demonic portals where demons are literally pouring in through the sinful activities of a region, a curse that has happened in that region. Help us to discern this. Help us to grow in our ability to do spiritual warfare. Lord God, I just pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you would strengthen us to understand our authority, understand our position, that you would convict us to be more aware of our spiritual surroundings and that you would um, help us to rise up in our authority, in your power, and to apply the blood of Jesus the uh, resurrection power of the cross to the regions that where we live, to the, t the areas where you have given us, the people in our family, Lord, we that we would like to see redeemed from the curse and and cut off from the demonic powers that are tormenting them. And Lord God, I pray f uh, first and foremost that you would help us to to continue to um, sit before you and cleanse ourselves by confessing our sins. And receive your forgiveness and receive your cleansing reign, the, the blood of Jesus, which, which cleanses us, that um, the stripes that he had that have healed us, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, we, uh, James is saying that the spiritualist that we've been praying against on Eldon Street has moved out. And I was like, I was a little bit frustrated because my, fr my friend Steve Hemphill talked about seeing a, a uh, you know, one of these spiritual reading places and praying against it and it being gone like the next week. And I've been like praying for months like, well, why does Steve get to get the person out overnight? <laughs> That's really cool. I hope they've moved out of town. Or been redeemed. I've actually thought about going in there and, and, and just having a spiritual discussion. Letting them know maybe that they had a gift and they were using it through the wrong medium. <laughs> the wrong powers. So I bless you guys today. Good things are going to happen today. God's got good things in the works. It's a good day. It's a good day to get things done. And that's a good day not to procrastinate our progress and to believe the Lord that he is moving, that he is working, to remember that he has left us here for a reason and it is not to stay underneath 
heaviness, depression, despondency, despair. And I pray if any of you all are struggling with a, a spirit of heaviness, that, that you would speak and declare that God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power of love, of a sound mind. He has given me a spirit of praise and worship. And the spirit of heaviness has to go in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, I, you know, let me just add, tag this on. Like, not just pray. Don't just pray when you come across these portals. you got to speak. you got to declare. You have got to say the word of the Lord. You've got to say what is true. And you, you know, if God's revealed what the curse is, break that curse in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless that region. You have the power to bless. And you have the power to curse. And you, these people. People have cursed certain regions. There, there, there's words and there's activities that have been spoken. But you are the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. So in your righteousness, in Jesus, you are righteous and you have the power. You have access to the power of God to operate in authority to bless what has been cursed. To, to bless what has been cursed. To bless regions to bless households when you hear of sickness when you hear of disease when you hear of downturn even when you catch glimpse of certain news articles or you hear a certain thing say no this is not going to last forever this is not our new normal we do not receive this in the mighty name of jesus freedom it's for freedom that christ has set us free and we're going to stand firm in the freedom that we've been given, in the liberty that we've been given. And we're going to do spiritual warfare, not just in our personal spiritual liberty and freedom, but for the freedom and liberty in our country, the freedom and liberty in our uh, the, the governmental systems. We ask the Lord to go in and turn things around. And I mean, there's so much governmental prayer that needs to go on. That's for another time. <laughs> That's for another time. Start where you are. In your, in, in your inner circle. And you just begin to pray. Uh, do prayer walks in your neighborhood. And then ask for the Lord for your issues that you're praying over. And your regions that you're praying over. In the mighty name of Jesus. I bless you as you go about your day. You guys have a wonderful day. If you want to sign up for one-on-one um, -on -one counseling. You can go to my website. If you want to partner with this ministry. You can do that there. Through one of the links in the title. Um, <clears throat> anything else? If you're in the Herna, Virginia area, we meet at 1030 on Sunday, the first and third Friday of the month. We meet for prophetic prayer and healing room. And on Tuesday night, we have a school, of the supernatural, and we're doing lots of prayers in that and, uh, practice and prophecy and even studying the word of God and just encouraging each other if you want to come to the tuesday night class email me because that is not just a pop-in class and i can share more with you about that so i love you guys and i will talk to you later